Every living being on the planet has to eat, has to find nourishment, but it's only in the human being that the need to find nourishment can mean a heck of a lot more than what's on the plate. When we're children, we all learn that when we're hungry, meaning our body has gotten depleted in nutrients, we start to feel bad. We feel low in energy, that kind of low mood, crummy feeling. Then we eat food, and within minutes, we can start to feel better. In a country where for most of us, ample access to food isn't actually an issue, it makes perfect sense that we reach out to food again and again to make ourselves feel better when we're under stress. Now, in bringing greater awareness to our relationship with food and eating, we begin to see that what we're actually hungry for a lot of the time actually has nothing to do with food. And the important thing here is that nobody has to tell it to us. It's what we begin to connect to for ourselves within the trajectory of our eating meditation practice. As we develop some familiarity with the comings and goings of our own mind as we eat, which is what happens when we practice an eating meditation, we begin to see these things for ourselves. If you've been on a diet your whole life or have had what you feel to be kind of an unhealthy relationship with food, I can pretty much guarantee that there are certain habits of the mind that come into play probably every time you sit down with a plate of food. And for the most part, we're mostly unaware of just how much these habits of mind inform our behavior. But now, with awareness, with mindfulness, people begin to become aware of these habits of mind and they start to wonder, do I really need to admonish myself every single time I take a bite of food? Or do I really need to push play on that soundtrack yet again of my mother telling me that in order to be a good little girl or boy, I need to clean my plate? Or whatever happens to be your particular habits of mind. Within the scope of awareness, it's important to remember that these are just thoughts. Nothing more, nothing less. A teacher of mine once told me that just because we think something, we tend to think it's true. But in reality, we have many thoughts that turn out not to be true. One time in one of my classes, I thought a student was having problems with something I was saying, and uh, it actually turned out that they had a stomach ache. What they were thinking and what was going on in the mind had nothing actually to do with me. And it happens to us like that all the time. In reality, our thoughts only have as much truth as we choose to give them. And this recognition of thoughts for what they are and our choice to give them a certain amount of truth or not is, in my opinion, one of the greatest moments of recognition a human being can have. And this in and of itself can be one of the truly liberating aspects of a practice of an eating meditation. We practice letting go of thoughts by moving your mind from thoughts into the pure awareness of the experience of eating in this moment. But listen to this, we can't and don't choose anything on automatic pilot. The automation does the deciding for us from habit. Like a wheel going around and around in a rut, the road tends to be bumpy and uncertain away from the rut and more smooth and predictable within it. That's why we develop the habit of going on automatic pilot in the first place. When things get tough or stressful or overwhelming, it can seem to be a huge help to just move back into the rut and go back on automatic pilot. And sometimes it's really been all we can muster. But that's only because we haven't known a better way. And that's exactly what we're learning now, how to thrive in our experiences instead of just survive. Did you know that less than 2% of people actually weigh less two years after completing one of the top four diet programs in the United States? Now, it's very difficult to weigh exactly the same, so the inference is that most people who actually complete one of those programs weigh more two years later. 
And what do most of those programs focus on? The food. But the choice to eat an entire bag of Doritos doesn't come from the Doritos. It comes from us, from our minds. Another interesting statistic is that people who tend to do other things while they're eating weigh 18% more than people who just eat when they eat. That's 27 pounds on a 150 pound person. That's pretty substantial. There are four most common things that people do while they're eating. Watch television, engage in conversation, read a book, and listen to music. Let's take one of those scenarios, eating and watching TV. Say we take our plate of food, which is really an arbitrary amount of food when you look at it. We tend to fill up a plate, so whatever size your plate is generally determines how much food you'll be eating. Also, we always fix our plate of food when we're at our hungriest. Or someone else serves us and they worked extra hard on those mashed potatoes, so we end up with an extra dollop of those on the plate. In any case, the amount of food on our plates tends to be arbitrary in relation to how much food our body actually needs. So say we then take this arbitrary amount of food over to the coffee table and turn on the TV. Now, where is our mind? It's on the TV. And as long as our mind is on something other than eating while we're eating, we will necessarily eat from habit. It's literally how the fork finds our mouths without us having to pay much attention. And if it's been your habit to eat more than your body actually needs, or to eat too fast, or to clean your plate no matter the size of it, then as long as you keep your mind on something other than the experience of eating while you're eating, you are going to continue to repeat your habits. This is truly why, for most of us, change is so hard. Now listen to this. You can only change in the present. You can't change in the past. It's already over and done with. You can't change in the future. It hasn't even happened yet. You can only change in the present. And if you don't have the ability to move your mind into the present while you're eating, for example, which is the same thing as turning off the automatic pilot when you eat, you will continue to eat in the same way that you always have. Automatic pilot never enables change, ever. That's the whole nature of automation in the first place. It's program behavior so that it can just happen in the same way again and again and again. It's what's easiest in the microcosm, but it's also what creates that sense of deep separation between ourselves and our lives in the long run. Listen to this. Choice is only enabled through awareness. If we were to, say, walk into our homes uh, after work unaware, our minds will be in whatever state our day enabled. But if we walk into our homes with awareness, we can choose how we want to show up for our families. And the same thing goes for how we eat, for how we do anything, really. If we eat on automatic pilot, we will eat and overeat and eat too fast, as is our habit. But if we eat with awareness, we get to choose how to eat, how much to eat, and we can be aware of when our bodies have actually had enough food rather than simply cleaning our plate. This choice of how to live our lives is ours, but we must be present to choose.